Good morning and welcome to Strength for Today. I'm Lauren and I'll be with you all of this week. Um, just sharing, um, I think Phil actually mentioned the other night how what mine was going to be was quite practical. Um, but yeah, as I labour with my hands, the Lord speaks to me and um, I'm going to share that with you this week. So this season in life that we're in with COVID, I find myself thinking, thinking will this time count for something when I look back? And I've made a conscious decision. A decision to not let this merely be a tunnel that I have to go through, but that it's a bridge to somewhere else, something better. The time has to count for something. I want it to be um, somewhere where I learn uh, and, and not merely survive. I've been studying the book of Genesis and we were on chapter 29 last week and something stood out for me regarding Jacob. Little by little, Jacob was learning to submit to God's loving hand of discipline and was growing in faith and character. And I just thought to myself, Lord, let that be what this season of, it will be for me, that I would grow in faith and in character. So we've been living in our house for 12 years and the kitchen has always been one of those rooms I walk into and go, there's room for improvement here. Have you ever done that with a particular area of your life? looked at it and thought there's room for improvement here. So I've been proactive, proactive, should I say, making a start in my kitchen, putting together a plan, doing the clear in a way that needed to be done in preparation. Things needed to be put in the right place. And as I went about this, there's a cupboard. You know the one, everyone has one. The one that everything and anything gets dumped in. It might not be in your kitchen, but you're bound to have one. It might not be a cupboard, it may be a drawer. But anyway, that sinking feeling when you open the cupboard and think, where do I start? What's worth keeping? What's worth getting rid of? Mine's mainly papers and documents and certificates. Stuff that should be shredded, but hasn't gone done yet. And then there is a basket that I brought down from the attic with some photographs and school reports. And then there was another basket that had like, well, I can only say it's like products that didn't live up to my expectations. And because uh, they cost me money, I wasn't going to throw them out. So they're in there too. Um, so what was God saying to me? There's certain facts, truths that we must hold on to. Birth certificates, bank statements and pay slips. I've got to keep them. Same way, we as believers have to hold on to the word of God, to walk in the knowledge of what it is to be saved through Jesus Christ. Bank statements. We've got to know our worth and our identity in Christ and how he sees each of us as a child of God. The junk mail pile. To be honest, that's the worst one. It's the one that really actually got me thinking. There's so much need shredded, but we let it pile up. It's the one that's hardest to deal with. Take, um, take for example, the things that we hear in conversations, the things that we read in social media, the things um, that we hear from television. Let's face it, it's most likely all junk mail. And it belongs in the junk mail pile. Yet we let it hang there in the mix. Amongst the truths that we know, we let the junk mingle. It's time to get rid of the junk, Lauren. Folks, it's time to get rid of the junk. In any area of confusion, look to the author and the finisher of our faith, God himself. And remember, for God is not an author of confusion, but of peace. 1 Corinthians 14 and 33. And then we have in Proverbs 3 and 5, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. So now I'm on to my next thing, the basket of photographs. Well, you've got to keep them because they show you how far you've come. 
they allow you to reflect on God's goodness and provision, remembering he didn't fail you then and he's not going to fail you now. I love looking back, almost joining the dots, so to speak, marking God's moving, moving, tracing those God moments only to reveal his handiwork. Rest assured, believer, he holds you in the palm of his hand. School reports. Boys, did I get a laugh reading those? Lauren likes to hold court in class and if she put the same effort into her work, well, we all know how that goes. Words spoken about you can take hold. A memory that has stayed with me. It's a statement from an old headmaster. I don't think, I'll, well, I can't say I'll never get over it. It nearly makes me laugh now because an element sometimes of what somebody says to you can be the spring poured to make you so determined to go the other way. So anyway, this headmaster um, discovered who I was and what family I came from and said to me, you're never going to amount to anything. That stayed with me. Has anything ever been spoken over you that stayed with you? That you haven't been able to move past? And in the moments of quietness, when you're left with your own thoughts, you hear the whispers of those words. God is saying, those words do not have the power to define you. Stick to what you know to be true. I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Let's look at that. Isaiah 43, verse 1. But thus, but now thus says the Lord, who created you, O Jacob, and he formed you, O Israel. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Now we're moving on to the basket of stuff. Stuff I bought to improve or remove things, quick fixes, that didn't live up to my expectations, yet cost me. So why did I hold on to them? Are you holding on to something today that didn't live up to your experience or your expectations? Are you still carrying the weight of what it cost you? That disappointment. God's saying, focus on what is real and genuine. Only hold on to the things that aid you not hinder you in your walk with the Lord. I want to close in sharing a scripture that has, well, I would always say if I had to, if I was going to let a couple of pages of my Bible, it would be from, from, from these two pages. So Philippians 3 and 13, I want to share with you. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God and in Christ Jesus. And you look over the page and you have chapter four and you have verse five and it says, let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. And then we turn to verse six. Be anxious for nothing, but on everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And then verse 13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So folks, get to your junk cupboard. Get it sorted. Don't tell me you can't do it. You can. Because you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Join with us tomorrow as we continue our devotions and tomorrow we'll be looking at handles. Let's adapt. See you then.